Okay, so today we're going to talk about Leechy uh, for flying with DJI drones. And people, I think, are misusing Leechy, and that's why I think I wanted to kind of create this Leechy series to kind of explain how to properly use Leechy uh, that will hopefully prevent uh, some of the issues people are seeing with crashes and flyaways and losing their drones, which I think is the saddest thing ever. Um, so, first of all, let's talk about what Leechy can do. So, what most people are using it is for the autopilot feature, which is basically a waypoint system where you can fly from waypoint to waypoint. But Leechy can do a lot more than that. It can do panoramics pretty nicely as well. It can also do focus, uh, which you could just set focus on a a, a target and then it'll just keep focusing on that. You could do tracking, which is similar to the DJI uh, Active Track as well. Uh, it does use software. Um, method of doing it so it's not probably as reliable as the DJI method but you could still do it which you know which is why I kind of got into it because when I have my uh, my Phantom 3 standard it kind of uh, gives it more functionality and uh, one of the other things really leeching can do which is I, I like a lot is the virtual reality method so you can wear your kind of uh, your iPhone as virtual reality goggles and you can fly that way which is pretty cool and also one of the features I really like is the screen recording capabilities where you can record the screen of the Leechy app and uh, kind of show what you're doing which uh, to do with the DJI Go app requires a lot more steps to do so um, that's kind of what Leechy is in a nutshell but what people need to realize is that Leechy itself is a, basically an intelligent flight mode. It's the same thing as DJI Go app with the active track and all that other stuff. Those are intelligent flight modes. And what people need to realize is with intelligent flight modes, you always need to be able to take control and override whatever it's doing. So the way to kind of think about this is when you're in a car, you're driving on a highway, and you're like, okay, I have like 20 miles to my next exit. I'm going to put on cruise control. And I put it, you know, 65 cruise control. Now, if I set the cruise control and I hit somebody and I kill somebody or I get into an accident, whose fault is that? That's still my fault because I'm relying on the car to drive at 65 miles an hour. Well, what if the car in front of me is going 40 miles an hour and I hit it? That's still my fault. And you got to look at it the same way with Leechy. If Leechy is doing something that's going to hurt the drone, you need to be able to take control and stop it from doing that. Um, another good way to think about it is uh, with actual airliners. You know, when a pilot gets an actual airliner, he programs everything in, uh, and pretty much airliners from takeoff to landing can be on fully automatic pilot mode. What the pilots are doing is they're watching everything, make sure everything's okay, and in case there's any deviation from the flight plan or any kind of emergencies, they take over. But their first priority is to know how to fly the plane. And one of the things you always have to do is maintain control of the drone. That is your number one job. So if anything goes wrong, you need to be able to take control. And the easiest way to do that with Leechy is put it in the sports mode. And when you put it in the sports mode, it'll stop whatever Leechy is doing and you have full control. So if anything you learned from this video is that take control when something goes wrong and fly it back. Now, what I, what I also see a lot of people doing is using Leechy to go beyond what their drone can do. Um, with the Phantom 3 standard, I think the, the limit is 500 meters on it, uh, stock, which is what I have. Um, yeah, I could program Leechy to go for miles. And what it would do, it would, it would tell the drone to fly by itself for miles out, but it would be out of control of range. And when it's out of control of range, you can't take control again. You have lost the, the human loop in there. And that's the worst thing you could do. So. Uh, what I'll show you is how, when I plan a mission, how I kind of uh, think, think about that in the mission planning stage, so I never lose control of my drone. I always try to make visual contact with my drone, and I always make sure that I have control, uh, uh, control with my drone. Because when you lose those, you have lost everything, and whatever happens after that is all your fault. If, the, if you end up hurting somebody, or killing somebody, or damaging property, the FAA is going to say, I don't care what, what application you're using. It's still your fault. So it's very important to think of these things when you're, when you're programming Leechy. Um, so let's go into the, the Leechy mission hub here, which is one of the reasons why I really like Leechy, because you can do everything on 
the actual website itself before you even go to the field. So usually a day or two before I go to the field, I will actually program a couple missions in, and I have a couple kind of standard ones I do. So what we're looking at here, we're looking at a golf course here that's right next to my house. I live right here. This is right next to my house. And apparently there's been a golf course here, and I've lived here like 12 years, and I've never noticed that. So that shows you how often I go to this side of the road. But anyways, um, I was flying over, and I'm like, oh, let me go take a look at the, the golf course. Now, what I do when I first start a mission is I kind of do an exploratory mission. And what that means is... I'm going to go to the extreme ranges of where I want to fly within this area and I want to make sure that when I fly it, I don't lose control of both video, controller, or visual line of sight because those three are very important. Video, if you lose video signal for a couple seconds, that's not too bad. If you lose controller, that's the worst thing ever. If you lose visual, that's bad um, because for FAA guidelines, you have to have visual um, on your drone at all times. So. This mission, you can see it starts right here, which is right next to where I live. I live right here. And uh, I take off, and I go basically over here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and here. Now, uh, let me just, just for the sake of showing you, I will recreate it. So I come over here, I click over here, and right here I have the settings I want to do. Now... Sometimes if I'm just doing an exploratory mission, I'll set the gimbal at negative 10. Uh, just kind of keep it that way. But you, you don't have to set that. I usually just disable it most of the time and just do it manually. Uh, I don't have a point of interest at this point. I don't really think about that. Uh, I don't do anything with this stuff. Uh, for the settings, I usually keep it at 20 or 25 depending on the drone I'm flying. Let's just do 25. I usually have it a curved, imperial, and all that stuff. So let's just do that. So I want to take off from here and... I'm just going to stay 150 feet. Uh, this is very important because there's a tree right here. This tree is about 40 feet high. Uh, 150 feet will give me plenty of clearance above that tree and above everything else around my neighborhood. So it's very important to always make sure that when you're flying, you're kind of using a good altitude. I have flown some missions where I don't know the area at 200 feet without a problem. So um, so what I did was you, know, you go over here, you click over here. Uh, oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Um, you click right here. And it's flying again right there. And I clicked here. And they clicked here. There's a nice little pond here. So I figured I wanted to fly over that. And then come back. You always want to have your mission end where you start. Because that's you know, that's where you want to end at. That's where you want your drone to be. Where you started. Now, right now, you'll notice that the heading is kind of facing all in the same direction. Um, within the mission hub, you can set the way you want to set the heading. Within the application itself, there's a couple of different modes. Uh, if I was doing this mode, I would set it to auto, which would kind of look in the direction it's flying at all times. If I was going to use uh, focus point of interest, I would say custom, because that's what you use for uh, point of interest. But right now, what this mission is going to do is it's going to fly out at 150 feet and just fly this mission. And that's fine. When I flew this mission, I noticed something very interesting. This building right here, at this time, was creating interference. So when it got to over here, about this range right here, it was starting to lose video signal. Now, I still have controller signal, uh, but, you know, I was able to take control in case there's any issues. So, I figured out that the issue was the building itself. It wasn't anything with the Mavic. Uh, I figured this building was probably causing interference. So what I did was I modified it to start from over here which is at the golf, uh, not the golf course, the tennis courts right here, which I sometimes fly out of. And using that, I was able to do this whole mission without any having any video interference, control interference, and without losing the visual line of sight. So at this point, I know that if I create a mission in this area, I'm good to fly. I know I'm not going to lose anything. So at this point, what I could do is I can create a you know, point of interest. So you left click on here. Let's left click on here. Let's left click on here and here. So what I could do at this point is I can go to uh, this waypoint and say, hey, at this waypoint, I want you to look at uh, at four. And this one is still going to look at point of interest four. And this one you're gonna look at point of interest one that's fine and this one you're gonna look at point of interest two i don't think i forgot to actually set that this one no, point of interest one that's fine um 
that's fine. And this one, we're going to look at Point of Interest 3. Uh, the nice thing about Point of Interest is that it'll automatically set the gimbal to look the best, so keep that in mind. Um, so now I've set, you know, Point of Interest Mission, and now I can run it. And I know I'm not going to lose controller, I'm not going to lose video, and I'm not going to lose line of sight. So this would be a good mission. Now the other thing I'm looking for in a mission is I'm looking at the time it takes to run the mission. Um, my batteries, with being winter time right now, the, the, the longest flight I've had is about 22 minutes. And that's 22 minutes of, of flight time. And I, was, I came back, I think I was at 20 something percent. You never want to be in a position where you're going to run out of battery. Because uh, that's very, very dangerous. So what you want to kind of do is you want to kind of plan ahead and know, you know, have plenty of, of wiggle room in case something goes wrong. In this case, I have, you know, 15 minutes of wiggle room if I have 20 minute battery. Uh, in the summertime, battery should be better. Now, the other thing I know about this mission, because I've flown this mission, is you have to take account into wind conditions. Because when you go to a, a new site, you have no clue what the wind conditions are. And what that means is, if, if I'm flying out here, from here to here, um, there might not, you know, the wind might be against me, or it might be with me, a tailwind. So, I could be going with the wind or against the wind, I don't know. So, speed-wise, I, while I tell it to do 25 miles per hour, it might not be able to do 25 miles per hour. And that's what it's using to calculate this. So, if I'm using the calculations that it's using, I, I'm going to get into a lot of trouble. So, I always make sure I have at least 10 minutes of wiggle room. Maximum, you know, 6 minutes is probably as, as far as I'll take it. If I know the conditions will be great. In this case, I know going out here, it's going against the wind. So even though I've told it, you know, 20 or 25, it might be only able to do like 12 or 14. Uh, coming around here is going crosswind, so it's, it's still having issues. Uh, so it might be able to only do 10 to 12, but going this way, it's going to be able to do the full speed that I told it to do. So you have to keep that in mind at all times. Um, you know. Just, just make sure that you're always aware of what's going on. And let me show you another mission I did here. Uh, hold on. I'm going to here. Let me go. On. <coughs> so, we were going to meet up with a couple folks and fly from this park here, which I've never been to before. Um, this is Warmester's Park. And what I did was I did a quick exploratory mission, basically. So, this is kind of just a see what the park is i knew we we're going to take off and land from here this area although we ended up moving to this area right here uh which is fine so i can even maneuver and what i did was i flew out to the the furthest region i wanted to and i kind of you know flew out to the furthest region here and i wanted to make sure that when i first flew this i was gonna have no problem with losing control now at this point i was flying with my phantom 3 standard and the Phantom 3 standard could do like 500 meters. Uh, when I was getting to this point, I was starting to lose video signal and a little bit of control issues. So I ended up putting my extender on, my little foil extender on, and I ended up standing on the uh, bleachers. And I was able to regain control the whole flight. Now, once I know I can actually do this whole mission without issues, I was able to plan a pretty sophisticated mission. So basically, it starts over here, it goes over here, flies over the runway, and it does like these very fancy loops around the points of interest, which in this case is a dog park, uh, some other parks here, and that's pretty much it. Um, so I was able to kind of plan ahead. Now you notice this one is 11 minutes, which you know uh, is fine for me, and it's 2.8 miles, and I can keep an eye on it the whole time while it's there. The the altitude is 150, which is way over these trees over here. And I know I can maintain a line of sight on it which without a problem. So that's very important to keep in mind because when you, again, when you lose any control of any of those three factors, line of sight, controller, or video, you might be losing your drone, especially with the controller. That's the biggest thing. Never go out of control or range mode. Um, so as you can see, I planned a nice fancy mission here, and I can do that. Now, uh, I did see what kind of you know, started me on this whole you know why this is important to do and why I wanted to do this series is actually let me clear this out um, and let me show you something so in this thread uh, which one of the guys referenced the guy was saying the mission was 37500 non-stop at 30 miles an hour and the Mavic was out of RC contact for most of the mission 
that's the first problems right there that I could see. When he said it's the Mavic was out of RC contact for most of the mission, you're just asking for trouble. Now, 37,500 feet is 7.1 miles. So let's just put an put a waypoint there and let's go three miles out. Well, we're gonna have to go, but we have to go fairly well. Uh, three miles out, and then we're gonna have to turn around and come back. And we can make this a little further out because we need to be 7.1 miles total. All right. Now he said he flew at 30 miles an hour, so that's what we're gonna set it to. Yeah, let's look at this mission. Now, of course, you know, normally I wouldn't do any kind of mission like this, you know, at this point. Um, but what I see with this mission, first of all, is you're going far up beyond what you're going to be able to see visually. Uh, even if you're flying, I mean, one thing, I don't know where he was flying, but he said, obviously, he was flying beyond RC control. So I'm assuming he's flying further away from himself that he won't be able to see the drone at all. So you're out of visual sight, which is very bad. That's first problem. Um, second problem is you're gonna, if you lose an RC control again, that's the worst thing because at that point you're relying on the fail safes of the Mavic. And the third problem with what he did was he extended himself to 19 minutes. So even if you're coming back at 19 minutes, uh, you might have lost your battery over here at some point, and it's just gonna drop. So that's the problem. If you're making missions that are going to 19 minutes, you're not leaving any wiggle room in there for any kind of issues. And with this mission, I specifically know that if I was going this direction, which is waypoint 1 to waypoint 2, I'm against the wind. So I might not be able to do 30 miles per hour. So if I'm not able to do 30 miles per hour, I'm only able to do maybe, let's say, an average of 25. I'm already over 20 minutes here, which means on the way back even though i'm able to do 30 miles per hour here i might not be able to make it all the way back and i may be over here and you know there's buildings over here there's cars over here you never know what you're gonna hit but the problem is you've lost control at that point because you went beyond control mode and when in theory it goes beyond control mode you've lost it now the other thing you got to keep in mind is with wind the wind can knock it out of the waypoint path so let's say it's flying over here and the wind is just a wind gust comes in and knocks it over here for temporarily. What it's going to do, it's going to try to come back to the last point. So it's going to maybe fly over here and then fly again. 